instruction to him. He was told to go find the boy bearing the Mark of Cree. Jen here, and I'm bringing you a review of Mark of Cree, another of my favorite games from high school. Mark of Cree was released in July of 2002 for the PlayStation 2. SCE San Diego is the developer, which makes Mark of Cree the only game coming out of that studio that didn't have anything to do with sports, except for Pain, which I guess is just a physics engine dressed up as a game. It's surprising to me because Mark of Cree is really well done, and I'd expect this title from a studio with a little more... variation. Mark of Cree is a third-person 3D beat-em-up where you play as Rao, man about town. It's good to be Rao. You're a gigantic Polynesian man who still manages this delicate art of stealth and has a pet hawk making you the coolest person in this game and potentially ever. The plot in a nutshell is that a group of evil people are attempting to collect six marks that if ever brought together will open a portal into a whole bunch of nastiness. Rao has to stop that from happening as he seems to be the only one interested in doing so. The goal is basic, get to the end of each level alive. During gameplay, you rotate the right analog stick to lock onto enemies and assign them an attack button. This is how you juggle multiple enemies and roll battles into flashy flourishes of Rao slashing across the screen. I've never encountered a fight system like this before, but it's very intuitive and I really enjoy it. It feels very early God of War-ish with about the same amount of cloth covering your protagonist's naughty bits. But this game feels a little less button mashy than God of War. You can't just run around sorting everyone in the face, although decapitations are completely sweet. It's important to have strategy and take down the right people first. It's almost possible to dash through the earlier levels, not killing anyone, but SCE made Rao slightly slower than most of the enemies, so attempting to run away usually just gets you killed. It's best to turn and face the music. Mark of Cree is tough as balls. Health and ammo are few and far between, and you have to collect these scrolls in order to have the option to save. Another potentially unintentional imposition of difficulty is that this title only allows you to have one save file. Mark of Creed definitely is one of the games in which I have accidentally saved myself into a wall, meaning I can't get past the part I'm currently facing with the amount of health and the arrows I have saved with. You know what that means. Restart the whole level. And if the game wasn't tough enough, they add in these challenges for each level, like decapitate 40 people. I don't think I'll ever 100% this game. When casting for the voice actors, SCE San Diego went with people who have voiced characters in Disney animated films, voice actors from Ninja Gaiden, and people who were in Sister Act 2. I'm trying to say that the voice acting isn't that great. If you don't agree with me, spend any amount of time in a tutorial. But don't worry, everything else more than makes up for this ever so slight issue. This game is like a patchwork stroke of genius. The style is a fusion of Polynesian and Aztec culture and imagery, making the overall design very stunning and legitimately beautiful. Then you have the 2D loading screens that are spectacular and still strike me as impressive to this day. Prior to the level starting, you have time-lapse drawings appearing with an overlaid narration, finishing with a 2D illustration of Rao and Kosu that gradually fades into the actual level itself. It's really creative. You have six main levels to traverse, each of them bringing different weather and foliage, which might feel a little forced on the part of the environment design. I personally welcome that wide variation, because I get to play the game with many interesting and robust backdrops. It's also nice to see the diversity of design in the art team. The levels are really well done, albeit incredibly and obviously linear. Mark of Cree floored me when I first played it. It had been a few years since I'd even touched it, so when I booted the game up for this review, I didn't know if I'd be writing from a place of nostalgia or true criticism. But the game has really stood the test of time for me. Pick this title up. It's a game that everyone should at least try. With the cartoonish animations and the blood and guts, it's like a dark Disney title, uh, except without the princess. Oh, but wait, you can find that in the sequel, Rise of the Kasai. Oh, my God.